Fox show is gonna be on the red carpet doing her Xavier Fox red carpet thing. Hey, everybody. When you're talking about eat meat, the transition is, of course, going from what we call inorganic to organic. Organic, of course, is grown better uh, and is taken care of better. Not only that, but the animals are slaughtered a certain way. When we think of kosher, we think of uh, the laws that were actually outlined in Leviticus, one of the books uh, of the Bible which uh, according to the Jews is one of the books of the Torah. And so this book actually outlined how and what to eat as concerning meat. Because remember in the time when before the flood, according to scripture, uh, we were not eating meat. It was not until the flood, the flood water settled and of course all vegetation was destroyed at that time where we were now given permission to consume animals. But before that, when we were living, what, 400, 500, 600, 700 years, we were vegetarian fruititarians. And as soon as we started eating meat, it was at that point where the lifespan started to shorten. Oh, wow. And so that, that's evidence that we can actually see scripturally based. And that's why during the, the Age Reversal Detox program, I actually use reference in the scripture in order to teach uh, a message that can help save a person's life. And so when you talk about age reversal detoxification, we have to first find out what causes the disease process. We have to find out what causes death. And, and of course, that's a big mission because even scripture says the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And then Revelation says death and hell should be cast into the lake of fire. So what it turns out is that death is not as natural as we think it is. But the same thing, that means that aging is not as natural as in India, they actually treat aging as a disease. Ooh. Here, we actually just accept it. In fact, mm -hmm. we prepare for it. Bear, we buy a, a, a burial plot, find you know, pick out our tombstone. Right, right. Start yeah, I'm going to die. Let right. me make sure I get this right. Exactly. Yeah. You start planning your funeral. There's companies out there on the line where you can plan your own funeral. Yeah, my mother-in-law, she did that. It was really weird because she had planned her funeral, but she had brain cancer. Mm -hmm. And she had planned her funeral, so when she did die, we went to this funeral that, she, I mean, even the repast, she had everything. We had wine and, you know, and she had slides of herself. So she had really just really planned to die. And that is, you're right, that's what we do. We plan to die. Mm -hmm. And you know what? One thing about thought is that whatsoever we think has power. So when we start entertaining these thoughts in our head, we begin to actually manifest that which we think of most. Mm -hmm. And so especially when there's feeling behind it, what does scripture say? It says, uh, the uh, fervent prayer of a righteous man of much. Much. Mm -hmm. Fer fervor, fervor is that feeling that you put behind it. Mm -hmm. So when we're thinking about something and we're putting a lot of feeling and emotion into it, then what we're doing, we're actually creating it. Mm -hmm. And so my thing is, during the age reversal detoxification program, we don't deal just with the physical. That's, the, that's one component at one level. We actually deal with the mental. Mm -hmm. Because it's how you think. Oh yeah. If we don't start purging out those mental toxins, yep. uh, then what's going to happen is that even though we may help the physical, you may lose a few pounds. Like, oh great, I've lost 20 pounds. But it's something that was left in your mind, some baggage mm -hmm. that actually began to cause reoccurring patterns and reoccurring behavior. Yeah. And so it's a lifestyle change, and that's a thought process. Mm -hmm. So you got to you got to deal with the physical, you got to deal with the mental, but then also you have to deal with the spiritual. Thing. Because on the energetic level, when you're dealing with energy, uh, it's actually at that energetic level where disease first begins. Mm. It first begins, I always say disease begins in the spirit. What I mean is that disease begins as soon as that balance is interrupted. Now, of course, you won't see it for years, but let's say at the age of 21, you begin to do things differently. Uh, and as you begin to do these things, now you don't see any manifestations of illness or disease until until you turn 41. But the imbalance began when you were 21. So that's why it's important to begin to get an assessment to find out, okay, at the energy level, at the cellular level, what's going on with my body. So in um, the age reversal detoxification program, we do an assessment. We call it a biosphere. A bioscan actually assesses all of the toxins in your body and where they're being stored. Really? Yeah. 
Now, what happens is that when we consume a certain weight and eat certain food, what happens is that the body builds up waste mass and it begins to dump it into different areas of the body. So it'll dump it into the heart, it'll dump it into the kidney, it'll dump it into the pancreas. And you know what'll happen is that in that area that they dump it, they will begin to hinder the function of the cells in that area. When they start hindering the function of the cells, the cells will malfunction and whatever the cells are designed to do in that area, uh, they will not be able to do. For instance, pancreas. The pancreas, if, if, if waste is dumped into the pancreas, it would hinder the beta cells from producing insulin. Mm. And that will be termed diabetes. Mm -hmm. well, but not only that, but they'll name it pancreatitis. So wherever the waste was dumped, it becomes an itis. So if it's dumped into your kidneys, it's nephritis. Uh, if it's dumped into your heart, mm. pericarditis. pericarditis. But it doesn't matter. In other words, what I'm saying is that there's only one disease, and that's cellular malfunction due to waste accumulation. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And so the key to reversing your aging process now, now that we understand that over time, we are eating a certain way that's causing the buildup and the accumulation of all of these toxins, waste, and acid in the body. And so when you begin removing all of that stuff, systematically over time, because of course it takes longer, it, it doesn't take as long to remove it as it took to build it up. So, oh, that's good. So as you start removing it, then what's happening is that the body starts healing. When the body starts healing, then it looks like the body is reversing and it's aging, but really all it's doing is going back to its original state. Okay. All right. This is making good sense to me. <laughs> it's making good sense. Um, so in, in the detox program, do you uh, target some of the things like, okay, for instance, I heard that soy is like really bad for men. Mm -hmm. You know, so are you looking at individual things like that or is it just a overall, you know, the meat, the vegetarian, do you do the, the tofu and all that kind of stuff? You know, what are your thoughts on all those type of things? Well, initially, because you got to remember, food is an addiction. <laughs> <laughs> so, by, when you're dealing with an addiction, you have to be really sensitive and systematic about the process. When people are consuming and have consumed meat for so many years, you just can't take them off of it. You can take them through a, a controlled program for a period of time, but then after that, you don't say, stop eating meat. You say, okay, this is how you eat it now. You have to now begin to wean yourself off it. Some people can go cold turkey, mm -hmm. but some people can say, okay, I'm gonna shut down the pork. Uh, I'm gonna eat a little bitty beef, uh, and I'm gonna frequently eat the chicken, and now they just hold with fish. Chicken, turkey, fish, those are my staples, right. actually. Mm -hmm. And then we say, okay, after, after, let's say, a few months, begin to modify that. Let's say, okay, I'm gonna just, I, can, I, don't, I don't need the beef. Uh, I'm gonna go with the chicken, you know, do that a little bit more frequently. Uh, then go with fish. Then ultimately what you're doing is you're you're slowly taking away from the body what you gave to it. It's just like a child, you just can't take something from a child because that's traumatic, it shocks you. So what you wanna do is you wanna make it a gradual process. And so what we do is doing the 21 days, that's one, the 21 days is evidence of how the body works. In 21 days, we want to remove you from the meats, we wanna remove you from the cooked food, which we'll talk about, and we want to remove so you're raw, right? We want to remove you from the, Ooh, from the raw dairy. vegan. <laughs> now, now that is some discipline. <laughs> now let me let me let me correct that. I'm uh, uh, over fifty percent raw. Now I still do pastas and I may still do cooked beans, but I don't do just a lot of cooked food like everybody. If I go to a restaurant, I do my salads, but I, I'm only going for pasta, especially if I'm at a, a track meet or if I'm in training. I'm making sure that I'm eating certain carbs. Uh, in percentage size, but when it, I'm not totally raw yet. Okay. I, I'm moving towards that. Just like I'm transitioning too, there's a whole evolutionary ladder of places where we can go, and so we got to take your time because believe it or not, <clears throat> there are people out there that don't eat at all. Hmm? all right, right. That's what I'm saying. That's that's another show we'll talk about. But they're called breath therapies. <laughs> Breath, breath Arians. Breath Arians. So, but. Oh, I'm full. <laughs> That's it for today. <laughs> okay. And so, and, so and, and, and only thing I'm going to say about Breath Arians is that remember in the beginning when it says, 
God breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. It was that was the only thing that man had needed for life in the beginning. It was from breatharianism where we started to well, the term I use is devolve. You know, you, we know evolution, but we don't know devolution. Okay. We devolved from a certain point, and when we devolved, we began to pick up things like eating fruits, eating vegetables, eating meat. But as we did that on the way down, our lifespan short, which showed us and was the only evidence we knew that we were not supposed to be doing it for a long period of time. So what I'm saying, uh, Ms. Fox, is that uh, meat was never to be permanent. We are now going through an evolutionary period where it's time to begin to modify our regimen. The diseases are nothing but signs and symptoms and alarms saying that, hey, it's time for the body to go back up. Because there surely are lots of diseases. Uh, it, every time you turn around, something's popping up. But then I think that's part of the you know, medical community. They want to make the money, too. Mm -hmm. but. And, and, you know, even the medical community now is actually becoming victims of what they teach. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually working with a, a doctor now. And, uh, he, you know, he actually had a few heart attacks and he had to get a placement. Ooh. Uh, and so, but the beauty is that, you know, he was redeemed. He realized it was time to change some things, even in what he was doing. He realized now it was time to start sending his patients another way. Mm -hmm. So now he prescribes detoxification for them. Mm -hmm. Before it was okay, uh, I'll, just, I'll uh, give you a few uh, of a wrapped meal or, or a cardizin. But now he said, you know what, I'm not going to give you this medication. I'm going to prescribe something that's more natural, that's going to help you long term and permanently. Right, right. See, medication was never designed to heal us. Right. It was only designed to do what? Manage the signs. Yep, manage the symptoms. And the symptoms. And make money. And make money. They want to keep you coming back because you're never healed. You have to stay on it for life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like taking your car in. Uh, getting one part fixed and you break something else so you can mm -hmm. bring it back. Mm -hmm. It's like patching that flat every time so to get a new tire. Exactly. It's going to pop again. Exactly. I've never been into Western medicine. I, I started with the holistic stuff when I was 18, so there's a lot of stuff I haven't done over the course of my life. But, you know, things have evolved and yeah. we've learned more stuff even because you're teaching me stuff, you know, that I didn't know. <laughs> now, when you talk about giving up meat, you know, there's a lot of folks watching, include myself, you know, I can give up, like me and my guy, we have No Meat Monday. And it's kind of like a thing we do on Facebook, too. We, you know, got a lot of other people doing No Meat Monday. And right. so we post pictures of what we did eat, right. you know. But to not have meat for a whole week. Mm -hmm. And I and I guess that's why we can now begin to go into the question about the soy and the tofu. The soy and the tofu food obviously is not something to be permanent also, but it's the best transition. You see, see meat, meat may be bad for us long term, but it's like I would the, the analogy I would give is a donut. Not not a donut that you eat, but a donut on a car. Okay. When do you need that donut? When you get a flat, right? Right. But you're not supposed to keep it on there. Exactly. That. Yeah. You don't keep the donut on there. And so in life, uh, we take we that flood brought a flat tire. And so that, that the the um, the donut or the spare to be put on there had to do with meat, but it was never to be kept there because because obviously it was designed for us to go back to our original diet. Why? Because when we do the detoxification program and we put people on the raw juices, fruits and vegetables, they start healing. That's our evidence that hey, the, the original diet is always going to be the way to get out of the disease and illnesses that we picked up over time. So you transition from meat, then you go do the soy products and do the tofu, but as you're transitioning, you're still getting your protein from different sources. And then ultimately, you want to let go of the soy, you want to let go of the tofu, and you want to start getting your protein through like your kale greens. Uh, I take, for instance, <coughs> banana. This banana. Now he want to tease me. I just said <laughs> I love bananas and I'm hungry. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you something about this banana. This banana has all of the nine essential amino acids that are needed for your body to synthesize protein. Okay. It's easier for you to synthesize protein than to try to break down a complete protein like beef and for and to break it down, disorganize it, reorganize it, and build it back up takes time and energy. Eating this banana, it breaks down very quickly 
but guess what? You're able to get to the amino acids in this much quicker. So I'm gonna actually have access to my protein much sooner than you would having eaten that porterhouse steak. Okay. And so the question is, how much energy is it gonna take to get the amino acids out of this as opposed to the steak? Because the steak made me sleepy. Exactly. And the banana probably won't. <laughs> I'll still be ready to go. So now you understand where the itis comes from. It comes from... The itis. There we go. As soon, soon as you eat that meat, you get sleepy because it's starting to pull energy from all over the place in order to... To try and digest it. Exactly. And get what it needs out of it. Okay. And it takes seven days for it to pass through, which can't be too good. Exactly. So yeah. at that time, I done had quite a few bananas. I got my protein. I've recovered. So now we start to understand what does it mean to be young recovery you know now you know you, you're probably not able to go up the stairs uh the way you were when you were in your teens well probably not in my teens but i'm in pretty good shape though <laughs> i can run for 45 minutes so. <laughs> and, and then the thing about it is that recovery like in, in track and field because i run internationally for usa at the masters level and it's, you know, some of the medals I had back here. Actually, I didn't, I didn't get these medals until after 15 years when I had taken off. So when I came back to track and field, I actually wound up getting more medals because of my performance. You got quite a few, I did. too. Yeah, than I did when I actually uh, was running collegiate track and field in high school. Uh, in fact, I wasn't that great at high school and college. Um, it was, I wasn't great until I started understanding the dynamics of the body. So we know you're past your 20s, right? Right. I am... I'll tell you at the end. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're going to try and figure this out along the way. You know, um, as you're getting, but you're running against 20 year olds, right? Exactly. In fact, all and those you're beating not, them, obviously. Right. All those are not masters track and field medals. Some of them are collegiate. Uh, I've run Division One, Division Two, and Division Three. What happens is that Division One are faster, Division Two are second, of course, Division Three, their times are not, they're fast, but you know, they have more high school times than collegiate times. <laughs> <laughs> the great um, outdoors. The great outdoors. <laughs> and so my thing was I wanted to demonstrate the possibilities of not only slowing down the aging process, but stopping it and reversing it. So that was my mission. That was the mission I felt was given me, to slow down the aging process, stop it, and then reverse it. So it's kind of like the regeneration. Our cells regenerate every seven years. So you're you're feeding them and nourishing them so you're actually getting stronger exactly. instead of getting weaker. Exactly. As we all anticipate, we're just gonna get weaker, but we actually can get stronger. That's right. If you if you took um, if you took a person's life uh, over sixty years and you took you took a photo snap of every ten year interval, you would see that they're that every frame they're looking weaker, older, grayer. That's, that's a disease process because guess what? If you speed it up, it looks like a disease. We can't really notice that Life disease. Life looks like a disease. It does. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and, and you, because 60 years is a long time, you can't see it with the human eye. Right. But if you, take a, 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 if you take a camera and you speed up 60 years and you just watch that person, you're looking at them, it looks like they're going through a disease process, which is what aging is. And so my thing was, what causes that process? And as I began to discover what causes it, I said, okay, well, let's start removing some things. Let's start removing the heavy meats uh, that causes a buildup of acid, uric acid, that gets deposited into the joints and bones. Uh, let's start removing some of the dairy, which, of course, for our people, we're lactose intolerant. Uh, so, of course, that mucus that's building up in our system that's, that's causing uh, acidity, uh, let's remove that. So are we all lactose intolerant? Many of us are, by nature. It doesn't seem to bother me, really. Right. I don't think. <laughs> well, some of us have actually just developed our uh, abilities to eat it, I mean, and to, to actually drink them. Uh, but a lot of us, as time goes on, you, your body, you may have a stronger immune system than probably most others. As you get older, you may not be able to drink the milk as you were when you were younger. So what's I'm happening... I'm already kind of older. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been fighting the Asian process for a long time. <laughs> The, the, the body, the body is very uh, what we we say resilient. That means that it will fight to keep you alive for a long time. But in the process, the cost is your immune system weakens. So what happens is that some people who were able to eat oranges uh, in, at one point in their life, because now their immune system is is a little weakened, now that same orange uh, is actually hurting. But they didn't know it was because now the immune system is not able to defend against it. 
So okay. that's why it's important even to know your blood type, which is one of another um, classes that we do. We, we talk about blood type diet. I'm B positive. B positive. And that's easy to remember because I'm a positive person and my blood type is B positive. Yay! Well, I'm, I hate to I hate to be the bringer of bad news. I, I'm just gonna say this one thing: if I can save anybody, uh, type B. Uh, one of the poisons for type B actually is chicken. Really? Chicken. I'm done with chicken. That's it. No more chicken. <laughs> That's it. No poison. So now my bottled water is killing me. The chicken is killing me. And and you know the thing about it is that a lot of people don't believe in, in blood type diet. Uh, I believe in it because I tested it. Um, the way you test it is that once your once your body has gone through a detoxification, a cleansing process, it becomes what we call sensitive. Now, of course, when your body is sensitive, that means that if you consume something, you're going to be able to detect that if that's bad for you or if it's good for you, because you'll have an allergy, a breakout, something to happen. But if your body is dull or numb, that means that you can eat, eat, and eat, and never know that something inside that food is actually detrimental. You know what? Because what we're doing is we're getting testimonies now on film, so we can start sharing it with people who are going down the same road as you're going down. And we, they want to they want to kind of hear what they have to go through, what been go through, like you know, with yours. A lot of times. You know, some people, one, one thing is when you're detoxing, it, you know, you don't want to put too much exercise on your system because you, you're trying to let it, you know, kind of balance itself out. But, you know, some of the athletes that have come through have just went on and worked out during it. And, and you know, it kind of, you know, I didn't say nothing about it, but, you know, they did what they had to, but they were going to be a little fatigued because they weren't at their top max. So you're going to have a little fatigue if you're working out as Don or as a track and field athlete. But the most I would say during this time is, you know, the 30 minutes a day treadmill walking maybe a little light run but nothing too strenuous because your body is going through a process. Uh, hi everybody my name is Donna. Um, I basically wanted to do this just to for the cleanse I wasn't looking to lose like a lot of weight or anything like that. So I was just looking to cleanse and I'd like to do this on an annual basis. Yeah. So how's your energy bank if I may ask? Well um, as far as trying to get like workouts in I've been pretty weak. Um, okay. You know, I haven't had a lot of like stamina and stuff like that. Um, I actually did the uh, bike the drive this morning uh, along Lakeshore Drive, so that was really nice. We got there about six thirty this morning. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was before the heat hit. Right. Nice, right. You know, exactly. we're finished by nine thirty. Um, but it was it was a bit of a struggle sometimes one of those heels. Uh, but yeah, so I'm expecting after the detox I'll be stronger, so but no complaints. Well, very well, and each person is different. Um, most athletes, so she's an athlete, a runner as well, they normally have more energy, you know, they kind of re reach some of their personal goals and that. Okay, my name is Brenda. I first started the program to try to lose weight, but now that I feel the benefits of the health, I'm more focused on the health part of it. Um, so. And what has your experience been? Energy, health, any changes? Well, this week it was more emotional things I was going through. So mm -hmm. um, it was it was hard on me for, as far as emotions though. Mm -hmm. But as far as my health, it, it seemed like I'm much better, and um, and my energy would had increased. So. Okay, very good. You can do some things. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm Brenda number two. Um, <laughs> I joined it, not as, as same as Donna, not to lose weight, but to also to um, maintain my health, better health. Um, this week, um, the same as Brenda, was more emotional. I think I left Wendy a message and had texted her a couple of times. It was more emotional, dealing with emotional issues. Um, I mean, it, it got to the point, point in the mornings I was juicing, but I was crying while I was juicing. I'm like, what is, what is this going on? You know, but, you know, I had to go through it, you know, and I, it's just, I mean, just the entire week itself, I was just like, wow, you know, unbelievable, but I made it through it, um, and it's been, um, it's the, it's my last week, oh, I have some, okay. it's, this is my last week, and, um, it's, it's been, wow, life-changing, life-changing, and I think I lost another three pounds Another yeah. free time. Oh, yeah. right. And she was yeah. concerned about losing, but I said the more the closer you are to your ideal weight, which her and I have the same number as far as our ideal weight, 
and you won't lose like as much but you know her three pounds it's okay you feel great about it right yeah, I do. and a little more may come out don't sweat it yep. but just keep healing yep. I, mean, I love the controversy go, 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 go. Uh, whenever i start talking it just sets people off